already talked about how you upgrade your Perver account, how you scan your data, uh, your fabric data specifically, how do you build um, a business domain. Now we're going to talk about how do you create a data product inside of Microsoft Purview. And a data product in Purview is a collection of physical da data assets. For instance, you can connect it to uh, your semantic model, you can connect it to specific tables, you can connect it to a report, or all of the above. This is all up to you and how you define a, a data product inside of your organization. Let's go, I'll show you how you do it. What you do is that you go into the data catalog features and then data management and then data products, click create new data product, and then you give it a good name and you give it a good description. And then you also decide what type of data product is this? Is it a data set? Is it a report? Is it something else? You give it an owner. Then you also connect it to a specific business domain. We've already created operations as a business domain. And then you also write down the use case. So what is the use case of this specific data product? And then you're asked, do you want to create some policies or do you want to connect this um, data uh, product to physical assets that you have already scanned? So we previously scanned Microsoft Fabric. So I'm going to connect this uh, Power BI data set to my um, data product. This one, Taxi Trips, that you see inside of my operations workspace in Fabric. A key thing to remember here is that if you want to see the tables that resides inside of the semantic model, you need to make sure that you are giving the purview uh, service principle the contributor role. So it needs to be the contributor role. And if you haven't already given purview uh, contributor access, you need to re-scan and have an additional scan of your source to actually pull in those tables. And here you see that I've now added this uh, semantic model, which was had got two tables, the reference data and some trip data. Now we can set some terms uh, of use for each of the tables uh, or physical assets that I have added. And th that could just be links to other uh, SharePoint sites and so on. So you'd basically just do that. You can also add additional documentation. You do that in the same way. You link to that documentation wherever that resides and give it a friendly name and then people can access it. Now let's create some policies. So you see here that there are already some policies that exist. We have um, assessing fit, critical reporting, directional insights. And let's say that you want to add an additional purpose. Um, for instance, you want to use this data product for other data product development. So I'm going to add that as a purpose. I'm going to say that when you request access for this data, um, you can maximum have it for six months. Uh, I'll say that manager approval is required. And then I'm going to set myself as an approver. I'm going to permit data copies for this one. And then we can preview the actual request form. So this is the form that people are going to get when they request access to this data asset. You see now that based on my input, for instance, data product development has been added as a purpose. And you can also make other changes. So if we, for instance, say that we also want to um, add the terms of use for this product as a whole, I can do that. Um, and have that as something people need to read before they actually go ahead and use the data product. So this is a really nice way to manage your data product. You can just go into the catalog, find the data product that you need, and then request access directly. And when we're ready, we can publish our data product and then go into the data product search. If I open up the operations uh, domain, you see now the trips, uh, the data product trips is available and I can request access if I want. We'll see the request form again. Um, and now basically your data product is ready for consumption. Wow, we looked at so many things. I think data products is one of the coolest features in Purview, but there are more. And next time we're going to look at how you can use Purview to help you monitor and manage data quality of your data products. So we'll see you in the next video.